Meanwhile, the Vice President, Yemi Yoshibanjo, has applauded the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, for banning the routine patrol of the Federal Special Anti-Robbery Squad, FSARS, and other tactical squads of the Nigerian Police Force. Speaking to State House reporters at his residence in Abuja, Professor Shibajo describes the routine attacks on young people as infuriating. While condemning the actions of some officers, he called bad eggs of the force, the vice president asked the police to stick to their mandates. He also commended civil society organizations for speaking up against injustices meted out to some security operatives on young Nigerians. Joining us uh, to have a conversation on this is the convener, hashtag NSAS, Mr. Shegu Awosoya. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me on your show. Uh, for those that have been uh, watching the SARS exorcist, you obviously need no introduction. So I'll just go ahead and ask you, what is this move? Is this move by the IGP a commendable one? It is commendable, but I must say that we are left with mixed feelings. But first, before I go into what the observations are or what the analysis are, let me first take this out. Uh, the idea that you can target a group institu or institutions with a collective crime, regardless of the specific innocence or guilt of the constituent elements of that group or institution is absolutely aberrant. And this is the same perception we condemn in the police engagement with the people. We know that there are patriotic officers in the system who need our support to fix the system likewise. There are millions of innocent, innocent citizens out there dying to freely express themselves on, the, on their fatherland without being uh, profiled and killed unjustly by rogue units. Having said this, what the IG, uh, the protocol the IG puts in place to us is nostalgic. It's, it's something that he himself repealed two years ago. This was what the stopgap put in place by the IDP Idris as at the time when um, NSAS campaign went on in 2017. After the uh, presidential uh, order for them to refocus or to overhaul the SARS, this was the same protocol that was put in place then that he repealed. So having resumed the impunity for two years, and then we're now back to the same thing. What exactly do you want people to feel? You live in a VUCA world today that's a volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous environment whereby people have internet to monitor the whole system. Nigerians are not trusting the system. Nigerians hardly trust the government. So how do, do you expect them to see this and applaud that, uh, the, the, the move and hope for anything to change? As we speak, on a daily basis, you know, of course, it is easy for people to say, uh, oh, there are some officers that are bad. But to us, it doesn't seem that way. Even though we know that there are good officers in the system, we are saying the ones that we encounter on a daily basis are nothing but, you know, uh, 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 organized crime syndicates. We know how much is being recovered on a daily basis on the street. We know how much is being recovered on a monthly basis. And we know how many people cannot even live to tell the tale after an encounter with police officers. So we're saying we need the tactical squads to be shut down for spiritual maintenance. They need to be reevaluated. They need to be they need to be retrained. They need to be they, to be taught what the law says. We have a new police bill, a uh, uh, new police law out there, which repositions the police for enhanced service uh, delivery, meaning that they are supposed to now be accountable and be transparent, meaning that they are supposed to now prioritize fundamental human rights of the people meaning that they are supposed to collaborate with organizations outside their system in order to win the trust of the people. But how are they going to do this with deceit? How are they do, going to do this by moving furniture around? How are they going to do this by not being sincere to reforms? This is not a reform, by the way, because people have, keep, have been saying, have been asking questions, that how many times would they ban uh, uh, police officers from patrol? How many times would they, uh, would they uh, uh, make orders that they should remove roadblocks? Today, traveling on the highway on Nigerian roads is a death trap because you are not even afraid of the armed robbers. You are afraid of the police. So this is what we are asking for the police to, 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 to change. 
Okay. And it gives Mr. those Mr. interest. There's no how they can win trust. And if you can't win trust, you can't police Nigeria society as complex as it is today. Mr. Osoria, your, your advocacy um, uh, is called NSARS. But of course, uh, the government is talking more about reforming uh, SARS. Um, and of course, um, name changing and uh, maybe also changing the, the command and how it functions. Um, do you think you know, that might be a better answer um, in any way? I've also seen statements from the, um, one of the president's aides uh, who said, you know, this NSAS campaign is targeted, you know, at, um, of course, uh, destroying the chain of command and, and some of that. Um, so which would you say has been of uh, greater effect? Would you say end, end SARS, you know, or the reforms that the government is uh, speaking about? We are reforming the entire Nigerian police because it is not just the tactical scores that are going wrong. The entire police formation has issues. The entire police commission has been inflicted by uh, metastasized cancer. So in order for you to save the body or to salvage the body, you probably need to have to cut the cancer somehow. And in order to do that, you cannot continue to push a bad product in the face of, of your consumers. If they have complained about the something, you shut it down and then you review. You go back to drawing board and you win trust. That's what you do. You don't continue to push the same people. How exactly are you going to force police officers who are, who don't, who are void of, of the understanding of how the law operates, police officers who don't understand what fundamental human rights are, police officers who abduct people and demand ransom, how do you expect to continue to allow that to, 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 to function in the society without uh, uh, aligning yourself with the force on the street? Of course, hirelings within the uh, uh, corridor of power will say anything to maintain their keep, whereas their families and, and friends are being you know, uh, decimated on the streets. So those ones are expected uh, responses from people who are uh, maintaining, who are trying to keep, uh, end their keep. But the government must be sincere and not to understand the plight of the people. You cannot continue to have a, a system where the police who are meant to protect the people are the ones violating the rights of the people and robbing the people on a daily basis. Uh, Mr. They, have the data. they understand what is going on. I, I want to um, interject off what you said. Um, the IGP made it clear when he was making the announcement that the... the, the, the SARS is an integral part of the police uh, force and that there is no plan at the moment to shut it down. Um, he has given a palliative, stopping them from being on patrol. Where does that leave us? Because you are advocating not just uh, for, um, for them to scrap it, but for a complete overhaul of the system. The government says this is not happening. Where does that leave your campaign? Our campaign will continue because this is exactly what the people want. The people who are dying, the people who are being felled by the bullets of rogue officers are saying enough is enough. So if the government wants to declare war on humanity, if the government wants to declare war on, this, on our civilization that is supposed to be governed and ruled by law and order and, and, uh, and uh, law and order and also the rule of law and also the respect of human rights, then they will do the will of the people. We are saying that we are not reforming cancer. We are saying we are cutting cancer. Are you telling us that the police entirely uh, has been relegated? SARS is not a lawfully, uh, 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 a, a lawfully orchestrated uh, unit. They are, they are an ad hoc system. It's an ad hoc program. Bring it in and re 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 review it. Because you cannot continue to have people who don't have respect for the rule of law, who don't listen to orders. How many times are we going to ban roadblocks? How many times are you going to tell them not to do patrols and they end up green patrols? That's what we're saying. The IG needs to come back to it. The government themselves need to live in reality, the same reality that we're living in out here. You cannot reform something that is terrible and killing your youth. And if you continue to maintain this position, the people will have no choice than to conclude that the government is against the people. You can't work against the, the same constituent that you have. 70% of our population of 200 million are youth, and they are the ones being decimated. They are the ones that their life is at stake for having a phone for carrying laptops. But let's see how it goes, if they want to insist. Because the, the protocol they put out here now, aside from the new uh, police reform bill that we are asking them to implement fully, the protocol they put here, out here is two years old. 
It means to review itself. If, if, right. if I may interject so I quickly, if I, if I may interject quickly and ask you, of what impact do you think that bill, that the act that's now uh, law, will be really when it comes to addressing the um, aspect of SARS um, behavior to Nigerians? Under normal circumstances, with the administrative administration of the Criminal Justice Act of 2015, with the Anti Torture Act of 2017, with the Police. Uh, Police Act Bill, uh, Police Act Law of 2020, I don't think SARS can even operate with all these laws being implemented because the, the modus of operation will have to be totally reviewed. You don't change the brakes of a vehicle in motion. So you cannot continue to have the SARS operative out there operating in impunity without you bringing them in, you know, to reevaluate their position and to let them understand how society works in the now based on the new law. What we're saying is that they should publicize the standard operating procedure of these officers so that the people can know what to expect when you engage a police officer. Because most of the time, we have law on the one hand, and then we have the police op operating their own. So you'll be wondering, what law are they upholding specifically? So this is what we are saying. You cannot, you cannot uh, uphold the law by breaking the law. All right, so Mr. Mr. Sorry, I want to... Look at this properly and understand where we are coming from then there will be peace out there. Mr. Wasari, I want to quickly also um, ask about the vice president now. Uh, some have described his um, statements commending the IGP as playing to the gallery. Um, do you, what, where would you say that these um, orders need to come from? You know, should they be from the public office holders or from the police hierarchy? Um, and you know, the, the statements uh, from the vice president, you know, would you also, you know, give kudos to that? The vice president uh, uh, is the vice president. Let me just put it that way. He will say what he needs to say, you know, and as expedient, as politically expedient as it ought. And I must say that he is a professor of law. The vice president also understands how the criminal justice system works. If you are going to reform a system. You do not ask the people that are the, the body itself that is ailing to reform itself. They cannot be a judge in their own case. And he should know that after you know, having been uh, practiced as law as a lawyer and as taught as professor and also being in power. He should know that you cannot ask the police themselves, an ailing body, to begin to fix themselves. So we know well what we do if you are to focus on reform and take reform seriously. We must implement fully the laws that we have. And then secondly, we must also direct this to the, uh, the, the police have the police service commission. The police have the ministry of police affairs. The police have, uh, we have the legislative, um, that, uh, the, the uh, uh, house committee on police affairs. I would also have the stakeholders. We have the NGOs. Let these people come together and, and, and brainstorm on what works for Nigerians so that we can have a peaceful environment. How can you claim to have a civilization where there's no law and order? How will people pay taxes when they are not safe? How will you be able to even claim to have a, an enabling environment where your youth cannot even express themselves? So this is what we're saying. The, 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 the VP knows what we're talking about. He and, understands what is obtainable. And then he knows the right advisory to give the government. But you know, the police has always been a sensitive um, arm of government. They take directly their orders from the president and, and from the president. And with this, every time you challenge the police, it seems like you're challenging the president. And also, when this nation is run as if it's a huge court, and the police and every institution are balkanized to the point where every single attempt to make them do right is seen as a personal attack, and then they go into this defensive uh, mode where they keep running around tables while people die on the street. We, are living, we live in a, in, a, in a complex world, and we live in a, in 21st century. We cannot continue to have this primitive approach to reform. Okay, kindly, kindly hold on. I, I want to uh, throw two things at you now. Um, the first one is, you know, about the fact that it doesn't seem like these officers care much about the, the orders. Um, I remember there's been multiple times when there have been orders about, you know, stopping roadblocks and uh, um, checkpoints um, across the um, Nigerian roads. Um, not much changed about that. When the order is also about the uh, reform of uh, SARS also to happen a couple of times, it doesn't seem like anything much happened um, from the officers themselves. You know, they continued, you know, like there was no order from the IGP. That's the first one. Um, and then the second one is um, how you've dealt with these cases dozens and dozens of times. 
How would you advise citizens to act in order to survive these incidents? Um, cases where it seems like it's a kidnapping, it's extortion. Um, are there ways that you feel like citizens should be more aware of things that they may want to try um, in order to survive these in incidents? Thank you. Um, what we have been doing for a while now, for years now, is to create a kind of stopgap to engage and to intervene on uh, cases on a daily basis, and that is working also with the police. So as you can see, the authorities themselves know that we're not against the police. We are for the police. We're helping them to win trust. We're working together with them to ensure that we manage the situation pending the time we have uh, reforms, real reforms, genuine reforms, that begins to change the situation. We also are aware that we're dealing with a culture, which is why we always try to knock any idea that seems to uh, 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 situate what we're dealing with as a few bad eggs. There's no such thing as a few bad eggs. We're dealing with the culture of impunity, which begins to see seven in 10 of police officers operating against the law. Because corruption within the police or impunity within the police is peer-induced and peer-reinforced. From experience of a 1,000 people, they, there are no people who can tell you, or citizens that can tell you, while I was being robbed by this officer, this other one was telling him not to do so. Because it is now even beginning to look like a crime to be lawful within the system because of the nature or the depth of the organized crime syndicate that is profiting a few hands. So with this, we're saying citizens who are facing an encounter did not struggle with the man with the gun. What you need to do is to take note of the details that we can use to identify these people and then report immediately. We have the uh, complaint response unit that have been doing phenomenally well over the years. They have their data, they've been engaging on the daily, and most of the time in the hotbed cities uh, like Lagos, in uh, Rivers, uh, Abuja and the rest, when things like this happen and the, the cases are reported, within 24 hours, at the most 48 hours, those police officers will be apprehended and the rest, and then they'll be brought to book. Most of the time, monies are recovered. So we do this on the daily, but we're saying we don't want to pitch a tent here. We don't want to create a protocol through which we will normalize this evil. We want a change. And we want this uh, tactical squad to be overhauled. That's okay. the only way forward. Because As we don't want a situation where our youth, they are not this docile. They are only being lawful. They cannot continue to take this. And if you push people to the wall, they will spring. We don't want that to happen. Uh, and still, that's why we're telling them this ahead. Still talking solution, contrary to um, Osalge's suggestion about uh, the flouting of others um, on roadblocks and um, patrol uh, by the IGP on several occasions, your earlier comments about the restructuring of the Police Service Commission and the likes suggests to me that you believe the solution to the revamping of the uh, police relationship with civilian lies with the police hierarchy and not the police officers themselves. Am I correct? You are correct because the police lack leadership. And what is lacking within the system is this. I, I'm, I'm sure most of us are familiar with uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It is not about money. Pay Nigerian police one million naira per month. They are still going to stay on the street and extort. Why? Because their future is not is not secure. And which is one of the reasons why we decided to legislate. We decided to push an executive bill, facilitate it, do public uh, awareness for it, and ensure that it was passed into law, which is the police trust fund bill that begins to help the police to have this operational independence to be able to finance at least you know a lot of their operations. If you go to most police, police stations, for example, they don't even have up to 100,000 naira to run their operations within a month. And which is one of the reasons why you find police officers looking for every means to extort you. You cannot go to any police stations within the 774 local government and expect them to serve you or attend to you without you dropping anything. Right from the gate, you'll be paying money, like as if you're entering the cinema. And which doesn't speak well for a, night, for a country that is 60 years old. So what, what we are saying is this that you can actually rework and rejig and, re and tweak the system enough for these officers to see hope at the end of the tunnel, to see a light at the end of the tunnel. And that hap hap happens only when they begin to see their leaders, act as leaders, and lead by example. And it, this, this thing is not rocket science. It is easy. The concept of community policing is not about the policeman that lives under your roof. It is about police officers who operate 
with the respect of humanity, who operate with the respect of society, who operate by understanding how to engage society, not only while they are uh, prosecuting crime. So with this, people get familiar with them. People understand them. People respect them. Our children look up to them to want to be like them. That's exactly how you begin to reform a system, to give that sense of belonging, both to the police officers in society and also to the people in society to respect and to uh, honor the police officers and not to share information with them. But again, no. community policing principle is seen by them as, oh, a means of raising money to buy weapons, to begin to compete with some okay. other local organizations who are on, trying Mr. to oh, spread themselves, having lost hope with the police system itself. So right. a lot needs to be done. A lot of orientation needs to be given. And a lot of harmonization needs to be done between the police and the society. Mr. Yeah. Well, sorry, I kindly what? hold on. I, I want to, we're running out of time um, on this conversation. The IGP says uh, routine checks have been banned. Um, um, of course, once again, it's not the first time that we're hearing, you know, orders like this. How do you think that citizens or Nigerians can send a maybe stronger message to the government that um, the Nigerian citizens want more than just statements. Um, they want to see change. They want to see something different. How do you think that can be done um, if the online campaign you know, doesn't seem to be working? I want to say that the online on, online campaigns are working. That is one of the reasons why you are seeing these knee-jerk reactions that you are seeing today. If not for the clamor, you know, the global clamor that we have in the past few days, the IG is not going to move anything. Nobody is going to move a finger. So the online campaign is working. Unless you want people to take to the street and start destroying things. And we don't want that to happen. Because we know in this country that our constitution, what our constitution actually empowers us to do freedom of expression, freedom of association, you know, and the rest, freedom to gather and the rest, is seen as an attack on the government. When people come out to peacefully protest, police will harass them, police will abuse their right, police will shoot at them, if not kill them. So this is one of the reasons why we're saying, let the people use the uh, platform that they feel comfortable with, where they are safe, and express themselves. Now that they have said that this bill, uh, they have applauded themselves with a protocol that is two years old, let us begin to give them reports. So this time around, we will not be mincing words. This time around, we will not be hiding a data just to, you know, we will be publishing every single thing we see. And we will be letting the world know that this is exactly the protocol that they put in place, and this is what is happening on ground. So they should be ready for uh, a deluge of, um, of reports, you know, on a daily basis. All on, right, Mr. Also, yeah. Because we don't want to continue on this trajectory. We certainly don't want to do that. Thank you very much for sharing your time and your thoughts with us. I'm, I'm very sure we're still coming back to you um, in a matter of days or weeks because this matter isn't ending anytime soon. Thank you once again for your time. Thank you very much. You know, Osagi, something you said earlier, there was a time uh, in my team uh, years that I actually flirted with the idea of becoming a police officer after I had an encounter with a female police officer who, officer who looked so pretty, clean dressed and all of that. That idea died even before I finished secondary <laughs> school. So um, it is very important that in other climes you see um, um, stories of young children aspiring to become police officers. It's something of, you know, nowadays you tell your parents, I want to be a police officer. My mom in particular will look you from head down. It's, it's, are, they, are you well at all? It's really you know, um, quite unfortunate, not about what really. they look like on the outside. It's what's, you know, what's on the inside. inside you know, the corruption indeed. is on the inside. It's in the system. It's, it's, it's everywhere. Um, and my fear, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a young person in Nigeria. Um, I drive around, and the only time I feel comfortable driving around, a little bit comfortable driving around, is when I'm dressed like this. So I can imagine what every other person who doesn't have a job that requires them to wear um, a suit has to deal with every day just going about their regular activities, going to the mall, going to the market, going to, you know, the barber salon. Uh, and then it, it's mind-blowing how unsafe um, the Nigerian youth feel on the, on, on the streets, you know, from their own police officers, not from criminals now. Nobody, young people in Nigeria are no longer afraid of getting robbed on the streets. They're afraid of meeting police officers. 
it is mind-blowing. Indeed. Uh, why I quite agree with uh, Mr. Awosoya that um, uh, the reforms will start from the top. There still needs to be a re-engineering of the mindset of these officers. Because if your mindset is when you see, a, um, yes, you should be suspicious, but how you treat a civilian, I mean, tells a lot about you and the institution you represent. So it's important, while we're, the, the focus is on revamping the structure and trying to put things uh, in proper Don't perspective, worry. there needs to be a reawakening of a real consciousness among these officers that the relationship between them and civilian is important to the job that they do. Because, I mean, who are you protecting? Is it not the civilians? I don't think they care enough. Uh, they must care if we are <laughs> to move forward. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.